Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this time we have before you to give your name the praise, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to be here for life, health, and strength, Lord. Reasonable portion of health, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you, you be praised this afternoon with my words. Lord, let me decrease as you increase. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ah, that was beautiful. Book of Ruth, first chapter. First chapter of Ruth. <clears throat> Let us stand for the in reverence to God's word. I will be going through uh, verse 16. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn. In the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Kalion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem and Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons, and they took them wives of the women of Moab, the name of the one Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years, and Malon and Kylon died also, both of them, and the, women, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with daughters-in-law, with her daughters-in-law, and that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice, their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say... I have hope if I should if I should have an husband also tonight and should also bear sons. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from uh, stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and Ruth, but Ruth clave unto her and she said behold my sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods return thou return thou after thy sister-in-law and Ruth said last verse entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest I will go and where thou lodgest I will lodge Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God, Hallelujah. may be seated. May Where's be seated. In the good and the bad. In the good and the bad. I believe part of 
partly this was uh, came out of the revelation that a uh, pastor that I, I, I know of uh, really liked his, his, his uh, deliverance, how he delivered his message. Young pastor, 45, passed away on Friday. And uh, it, it, it got me to thinking about he has a wife and four children, <clears throat> two boys, two girls. And I'm wondering what the church is going to do now. Uh, his ministry is not set up quite like ours where we have people in line in place we have multiple preachers multiple deacons who can preach so on and so forth he was the main uh preacher there and his everyone followed him and now i'm thinking what will his children do they're they're grown they're of an age i think the youngest may be 17 or 18 but they're of an age to to make their own decisions about what they want to do uh, with their life, and he was such a powerful man that they that they followed him willingly. But now, daddy's gone, preacher's gone, pastor's gone. Will they continue on? And I thought to myself, it's time it's time for us as a, as a body of Christ to grow up. It's time for us to grow up. We can't live continually on, on mama and daddy's prayers. We can't continue to go on on, on, on the praise and, 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 and uh, adoration of big mama. We, 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 we have to go on. We, we, have to, we have to seek God for ourselves. And I, I came to this place in Ruth where she... And her mother-in-law are, are greatly grieving right now. Uh, Naomi's husband passed, and now Naomi's two sons have passed. If you remember what was said in the beginning, there was a famine in Israel, and they left their home estate to go to Moab. So. All of this is taking place in a foreign land. It would be uh, easy to give up. It would be easy to just throw in the towel. Many of us find ourselves in places uh, that we're uncomfortable with. We, we, we're, we're not in a place where we feel we're in control. And there is a tug on us to have faith. And we've never had faith like this before. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter whether you have good times or bad times. We're supposed to praise him no matter what. Amen. So I, I, I recall a, uh, in high school a uh, student named Patrick. We were, in, we were in the same grade, yeah. And uh, we were on the football field, and I don't know how God came up in the conversation, but it did. And, and he told me, he said, well, you know, I don't believe in God. And, I, and so I, I'm, I was a person that, you know, we went to church almost every day, uh, especially uh, summertime when I was up in Fort Worth. But at, at, I was a regular attendee of church. So it was baffling to me when he said, you know, I believe in God so I inquired well why not he said well when he was younger he prayed for his grandfather and uh, his grandfather was uh, apparently very ill and he died anyway and so to him that was proof that God didn't exist and it's now that's the that's the mind of, of a child you know, he was, may, we may have been 16, maybe 17 years old. That's, you, you're still a child at that point. And it's easy to say, well, you know, oh, that, you know that's, that's, that's so sad. But, but we have grown-ups who, who, who leave church. We have grown-ups who, who 
have all this wealth of knowledge, have, have all of this uh, experience in God, have all of this revelation from God, and still won't hold on. You got to praise them in the good and the bad. So here we are, Book of Ruth. Verse 2, and the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Kilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. So if you go into verse 1, it talks about there being a famine in the land. There's, harsh, there's hard times right now for this, this family, and the man decides, well, we're just not going to stay here and try to ride it out, you know, like we do uh, hurricanes. We, we are going, because you don't know how long a famine is going to last. So let's go someplace where we know that they have some food, some water. Uh, I don't want my family to be in despair. And so he takes them to Moab. Now, the interesting thing about Moab is that they are an enemy nation of Israel, if you go back in, in your studies. Uh, but he felt as though that this is still the place to go. And I'm here to tell you sometimes that God is going to tell you to go. Uh, many of you may or may not know, but uh, San Antonio was not on my list of to-do places. My wife from Fort Worth, I'm from Houston. Not that I had anything against San Antonio, but it was just not a place I was like, Woo, I got to get there. I don't care how much shamus they got. I, it, was, it was just not a place that I wanted to go. But just like Abraham was told to go, I was told to go. You may be told to go. That that ruffles feathers because we, we used to like, what, what we have and, and Lord, what I'm going to do. And, and a lot of times God don't line up things, you know, like it's uh, the IRS, Line upon line, every, you got to itemize everything. No, it, it, it's going to be go, and then you might not hear from God for a while. But that's where your faith kicks in. I know God told me to go. I know God told me to leave. I know God said this. I know God said that. And I haven't heard from him in five years, so, okay, I got to lean on that last word I had. I got to lean on it. I got to keep it. I have to guard it because there are things that are going to be out there that are going to try to sway me off of what God's plan is for my life. And so many, many of you, we, and, and this town is very great for that because uh, the military comes here a, a, a lot. So a lot of people are here that are not actually born here. A lot of people are here. A lot, a lot of people are in a foreign land, if you will, of San Antonio because they are in the military, and the military said, go. The military was their Lord. But we have a spiritual Lord who will also at times tell us to go. It is, it is a necessity that you move upon what God tells you to do. Now, in this case, the famine was the necessity. Man said, I can't have my family out here starving. I need to go somewhere where there is a, at least a, 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 a lick of abundance that we're not... Uh, hand to mouth, if you will, and that we're not starving. Verse 3, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. So now I'm in, let's say, Oklahoma, and the husband, my spouse, died. I, I'm, I'm preaching this way because I, I, I need you to understand and get within you the, this, her mentality of what's going on. Because a lot of times we think we're the only ones that's going through stuff. And I want to let you know that's not the case. God has not forsaken you, but you must stay in the will of God. So she's in Oklahoma, spouse dies, 
she has two sons. Okay, <laughs> I haven't lost a spouse, so I can't imagine what that feels like, but I can, I can sympathize that that's a, a powerful thing to happen. And your whole world at one point was wrapped around this person. Now this person isn't here. Now, you, you know, we, we had those songs about, uh, you know, I can't make it without you. I'm here to tell you, you better make it. You better do something. Don't, yeah, you know, love ain't that deep. You got to, you have, if, if, if something ends, if, if your spouse dies or what, or you have some tragic loss, life still goes on. You still got to eat. These, these children that she's, these two sons she has are still growing boys. They still got to eat. They still got to have shelter. They still have, so even though you are a, a bit disjointed in the, in the sense that you have, a lost loved one that you're mo still mourning, you still have responsibility to your family. Right. You still have things you have to do. So she's in a tug of war at this point, knowing that she's she's lost someone, but she's got, you know, especially mother, you know, got to keep it together, got to keep it together, got to keep it together, got to keep it together. Don't want, you know, you want to be strong. But this is a, a, a moment in time where Grief is going to overtake you sometimes. It's okay to cry. It's okay to, to uh, weep. It's okay to get down a little bit. That you, you need that as an avenue of release. Verse 4. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. So now uh, the two sons get married. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth, and they dwell there about 10 years. And Malon and Kilon died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So now we, 10 years roll by, and within a span of 10 years, now the, two, the only two relatives that are mentioned here, her closest relatives, they are now deceased as well. Hard times. I'm not home. My husband died. And now the joy of my, my life, my, the, the two joys of my life now, my two sons, they are now dead. What state of mentality are you in at this point? What, 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 what? And see, the point I'm getting to, getting to is that a lot of times people use hardship as a way to say there is no God. I ain't got to serve. Him. I ain't got to do nothing. I, 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 I quit. I quit. If it got to be this hard, I quit. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I, if, if I recall, it was a nail that went through this hand. It was another nail went through this hand. It was nails that went through these feet. That was the son of God. What's your problem? What's your issue? The Bible says he humbled himself to the cross. He knew it was going to happen. Okay, God, if that's your will, your, thy will be done, not mine. Because when we get, we, when we get in, in stressful times, we want to quit. That's it. Oh, the boss is getting on my nerve. Time for me to walk out. People act like that. They don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. You know, your people rub you the wrong way on your job. The first, when the first things come up, well, how many paychecks I got left? What can I do? You, you, you start wrestling because cause you, you about to you about to throw the pink slip in now. But this is but <laughs> but you have to hold on. You got to praise him in the good and the bad. See when times are good I, I, you know, Job was, was he, he had it going on, had it going on, you know, and then, I, and in one fell swoop, 
Everything's gone but the wife who wants him to curse God and die. Job is, and, and then he gets uh, three, three so-called friends. This brother's sick as a dog. I imagine at this point, he's lost a lot of weight, skin and bones, if you read some of the, if you read uh, uh, Job. He's frail, ain't eating much. He's hurting, he's sick, and the friends just pile it on. Don't make it no better, just, you know. Now nah, you wicked, Job, I don't know who you think you are. You, yeah, you done did something. You done did something. You ain't that righteous, Job. You, you know, and, and all the time, Job is like, Man, I, I ain't did nothing. I ain't did nothing but praise God. I ain't did nothing but pray, pray for, for my children. I didn't do nothing. I praise them in the good and the bad. And yet, trouble still came. He finally had to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. When his wife said, curse God, you sound like a foolish woman. Oh, you thought things were going to always be this way. Did not Paul talk about he's learned to abound uh, and be abased? Yeah. But I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. Things ain't always going to be good. Come on, I don't even know where this message is coming from. Things are not going to always be good. There are going to be some trying times in your life, whether it be a uh, lack of uh, income, whether it be uh, 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 a person in your, in your, I've had two members of my uh, friend and uh, family just die uh, uh, within the last two months. You know, I got to go on. I, I, ha I, 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 you know, pray for the family, pray for, pray for your situation. But don't give up. If a fruit is ripped from the vine, the fruit is no good. It's going to wither and die. Your help comes from the Lord. Then she arose, verse 6, with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. So now uh, she's heard that, that the famine is basically over. So I don't have any, she had no reason to stay that her husband's gone, her, her children are gone. She, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, <laughs> I ain't gonna go down. She missed her family she missed her family. I'm, I'm thinking about my wife and, and, and some. I know she don't want me to say it, but uh, I, 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 I won't say it. Uh, 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 so, 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 so she, she has no reason to stay here. She, they, this is 10 years have passed. And she misses her family. She wants to go back to them. Okay, well, let's, let's go. This, this, this is what this verse is saying. Verse 7, wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the, on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. She's saying, you don't have to come with me. I know that this ain't your, where I'm going is not your land. That's not your home. These are uh, people, women from Moab. She is an Israelite. She's a Hebrew. She's a Jew. We don't really have nothing in common other than the fact that you, you married my two sons. But they're gone. My, my husband's gone. I'm in this foreign land. Things are better now, I'm hearing, in, in uh, Bethlehem, in Judah, in Israel. So I'm going to go back there. I'm going to go back there. You don't have to follow me. And you've been kind to me. You, you've done things right. I, I pray God's blessing over your life. 
And Naomi said, verse 9, The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? I wonder if we have that 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 mentality with I'm a, they had those songs where especially in the old Baptist church where you know I, I'm going with God all the way. Ain't nothing gonna hold me down. I'm, I'm going with God all the way. And when times get hard, I wonder do we still have that same fortitude, that same mentality that it don't matter what happens in my life, I'm going all the way with God. Don't matter what the message is that comes across this pulpit. If I don't like it, okay, Lord, help me. But I'm not leaving. This this is the mentality of these two women. Because they realized that they were blessed in her house. And that that was something Lot needed to learn. When his his, uh, men were battling Abraham's men over the grazing land. You know, I would have said, my thing would have been like, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you. Right. <laughs> I, whatever you want, Abraham. If you want that, I, the, the, the proposition that Abraham gave, Lot, Lot should have gave Abraham. When Jacob was wrestling, he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Do we have that mentality? Do, do we? Because if it's easy, if, if the situation, if you have a price, then it's, there's a problem. Because the situation is going to arise where you have to choose. Is it going to be God or are you going to do your own thing? These women initially said, we, uh, well, wherever you go, Naomi, that's where I'm going. I'm with you. Ride or die. 12. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having, uh, would, you, would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. So now, now the price came up. You don't understand. If you stay with me, it's a good chance. I ain't got no more husbands for you. I ain't got no, no source of security for you. I don't have what you think I have. Now Orpah says, uh, okay, I didn't think about that. See, when you have a price, there's a situation that's going to come up to where you have to choose. Her, her choice was she, she wanted a man. Now, if she had been smart like Ruth, she would have understood that she, she would have been in line for, she might have been the one who was going to Boaz, who came out, Jesus came out of that lineage. But she chose her own way. She had her own mentality. She said, I, nah, when, when I look at this, see, if, 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 if a million dollars is enough for you to leave God, it's going to come up. Come on, preacher. Come on. It's going to come up. Come on. It's going to come up. Many people have said, Ooh, I'll serve you. I'll serve you them all the more if you just give me a car. Yep. Yep. If you just give me a car, I could be there every Sunday. If you give me a car, I could just be there every, every. Yeah. Yeah. Then we get the, get the Hyundai. And you ain't there on Sunday. It, it, I have seen this over and over and over. When God, if you got to, again, 
If, you, if there is a price for your salvation, it's going to come up. Oprah's price was a husband. Security. She needed a man and things. But Naomi said, clave unto her. I ain't leaving you. And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back to her people and unto her gods. Moab was a place of multiple gods, you know, akin to India, any of these other places where you, where you can serve many gods and get to heaven, so, so they say. Return thou after the, so, so, Naomi, so, so Naomi's pushing the point. You need to go. You need to go. 16, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I'm going to go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. So now she is taking ownership of this whole thing. When we get up there and, and we and, and, and we get married, we, you know, it's, it's until death do us part and all of this, uh, the good and the bad, all of this stuff comes out in the wedding vows. So I'm not understanding, you know, why we got, all, the divorce rate is so high. There was a price somewhere that people wasn't expecting. They had it, but they didn't want to be, uh, they didn't want to uh, own up to it. And so now, Naomi is saying, in the good or bad, I'm going to be with you. I'm going I'm, I'm to be with you. I've seen how you were with your sons. I've seen how you were with your husband. You were a kind lady. I want to be with you. I've seen your God do things. Because she wouldn't have even mentioned it if she had not seen or, or seen a revelation of what God did in Naomi's life. And then, so it baffles the mind how people can see revelation after revelation after revelation. And then, walk right on out. Walk right on out. Like God ain't did nothing. Like God ain't said nothing. I, I, it baffles the mind. We're supposed to praise him in the good and the bad. You get, you, you know. If you get to talk to, then take then take it. Yo 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 skirt was a little too short. One of the first things uh, Bishop got on me about people. Oh, you got Bishop got on. Yeah, he sure did. And, and it wasn't a, a knockout, drag out type deal. It, ain't, it wasn't even really a big deal. But it was still, he had to come to me. He had to address something. First thing was, say, brother, you, you know, you, you, you over the choir, you over this, that, and other. You know, we, in leadership, we got to wear ties on Sunday. That was the first thing he told me. No problem. Bow tie, whatever, ask God, don't matter. I'm coming with a tie. Not gonna, not gonna matter. You, I'm not leaving the place I know God told me to be. Not gonna do it. There may be seasons where you know, I, for whatever reason, Bishop may have to sit me down. If I got to sit down, I'll be out there in the, in the, in the roads with y'all. I'll be embarrassed. But that's okay. I'm be embarrassed right here. We get in our feelings. We, we, we get to calculating. And, and, you know, if I went to this church, you know, they'd have me at this level, ooh, in about two weeks. I love my brother Lowe. I love my brother Lowe. Brother Lowe, brother Lowe and I were talking, and he, he said this, this uh, uh, pastor uh, basically wanted him to take over uh, uh, one of his churches, basically. And Brother Lowe said, I can't do that. 
this my church. This my bishop. This, 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 is, this is where I get fed. So the pastor says, well, you know, anybody else would just jumped on him. He ain't anybody else. See, if he had a price, it would have came up and he would have been like, oh, really? Oh, how much that pay? What my stipend going to be? You know, did I get a, 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 a free parking up front? Did, I, all this stuff for the if there was a price. But he couldn't be bold. He couldn't be bold. Reminds me of what Jesus was, was being tipped in the wilderness. He said, if you, you do this, if you serve me, all this will be yours. He even, even, even got, gave him scripture. Don't the Bible say, you devil, you. That's why we need to know our word. You fencing with a marksman. You fencing with somebody that with skill. And if you don't know, it is easy for you to get caught up. Easy for you to get caught up. But Ruth had the mentality that we are supposed to have right. toward God and God's people. Right. We are not people that are uh, thrown and, 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 and battered by every little storm. Oh. We're not going to and fro. Right. We, you know, we are supposed to be trees that are planted by rivers of water. Tree don't get up and leave the river. Right. Right. It's getting nourished. Ooh, it look good over there, though. Right. Right. No, sir. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Because if your friends leave, God, are you going to leave? Come on, now. Come on, preacher. You're saying something now. Mama said Christmas all right. What the Bible say? Come on, now. Uh, well. Because, again, if, there, if, if there's a price, it's going to come up. Yeah. Ooh, them lights. Right. Love them lights. Them lights, they shining off that off, off the off the off the bulbs of the of the tree. And, and look how green. Look how ooh, it's so tall. It's so tall. They've trimmed it and if there's a price. Although it's been said many times, many ways, it's idolatry to you. We must praise him in the good and the bad. God bless you.